Those shots came from over by the fountain. Come on. Wait, look, that man running out of the park. Pam, you and Alan stay here. I'm going to follow that guy. Mr. and Mrs. North. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. Listen as Pam and Jerry solve the mystery. Murder for sale. On a February night such as this, the fog steals up the East River from the bay. The Williamsburg Bridge is an island in the mist. And the dark waters below the bridge are cold and moody. A reflection of the eyes of the tall, prosperous, middle-aged man who stands at the rail, unaware of the woman approaching him. Got a cigarette? What? I asked if you had a cigarette. No. Okay, so I'll smoke one of my own. Stinking night, ain't it? Uh, look, honey, don't do it. Do what? What you're trying to make up your mind to do? What you were thinking about back in Dutchess? Dutchess? Yeah, the bar that you was just in. I saw you, staring into your drink the same way you're looking down at the river. Would you mind leaving me alone, miss? Just call me Lucille. You know, I had a hunch you was headed for the bridge when you left Dutchess. Very intuitive of you. Yeah. Now, will you please go away? What is it, honey? Is it poor health money, a woman? (laughs) Gotta be one of the three, but you don't look sick, and... The role you flashed in Dutchess didn't come from a county relief check, so... So it must be a woman. Yeah. A shrewd deduction. Yeah. Yeah, but it ain't worth it. You know, that river's wet and cold, and when you're dead, you're dead a long, long time. Yes. Have one of my smokes, honey. No, thank you. Yeah. Day must be quite a day, huh? Your wife? Mm-hmm. Your wife. And another guy up there. Would you please let me help? And so you're going to make him feel real bad, like a couple of heels by taking a brody into the river. Well, that's okay, except they'll get over feeling bad, but you won't get over being dead. So, from your angle, it don't add. Have you ever been in love? <laughs> you said your name's Lucille. Lucille what? I'll just leave it at that, huh? I'll call you Mr. Smith. So you're Mr. Smith and I'm Lucille. I'm cold, I'm broke, and I'm thirsty. Could I buy you a drink? Oh, anything but water, honey. I hate water. Rough pipes. Drowns people. Jerry, it's after nine. Let's get out of here. Okay, darling. I hate these cocktail parties. (laughs) So do I. Come on, let's go. Who are you looking for? Well, I thought Charles and Ellen would be here. The Prescott? Yeah. I wanted to see Charlie on a business thing. Jerry! Huh? Hey, how are you? I haven't seen you for months. Mark! How's the publishing oh, business? Oh, fine. How's the stock market? Oh, up and down. Mark, I'd like you to meet my wife. So this is Pam. I've heard a lot about you from Ellen. Uh, Mrs. Prescott. Pam, this is Mark Willie. How do you do? You two aren't leaving, are you? Yeah, afraid so, Mark. I was hoping uh, Charlie and Ellen Prescott would show up, but... Oh, Jerry, there's Ellen coming in now. Yeah, but Charlie doesn't seem to be with her. Excuse me, will you, Jerry? Well, well sure, Hi, Mark. Hi, Mr. Mitchell, Ellen. Ellen? Ellen? Oh, Mark, you were able to make it. Yeah. Charles isn't with you. No. Keep your coat on. Mark, where are you taking me? Out on the balcony. <sighs> what a jam. Ellen. No, Mark. Please, somebody might see us. I wish somebody would. Mark. Some fat mouth gossip who'd go running to Charles. Apparently, that's the only way he's going to find out about us. Mark, will you... Or have you told him? You know I haven't. I know you've promised to. Last week and the week before that and a couple of months before that. Ellen, how long is this going to go on? Mark, why must you always make a crisis of every time we see one another? I don't. I merely want to know what you're going to do about telling Charles you want a divorce. Well, it's... It's so hard. Is it any easier than this? Look, Ellen. If you don't tell him, I will. No, please. Mark, give me a little more time. How much more? Uh, a week. Ellen. A I... week. Mark, please. I, I promise you. A week from today, you'll have your answer. <laughs> Another round here, Dutch. Okay. So, go on, Mr. Smith. And that's it? After ten years, your wife's in love with another guy, huh? Yes. Is she younger than you? Almost twenty years younger. Oh. Here are your drinks. Yeah, thanks, Dutch. Take it out of this. Sure. Hey, put something in the jukebox, huh, Dutch? Okay. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm just wondering why I told you all this. Honey, you're in the kind of mood where you talk to a lamppost if it stands still and listens. And so just because you lose your wife, you want to step off the middle of a bridge. Uh, look, like I said, 
You can make your wife and her chum feel like, well, something you wouldn't scrape off the sidewalk. And you can be the greatest guy in the cemetery. You take a Brody and your wife's a jerk, her boyfriend's a dog. Everybody feels sorry for poor old Smith. Everybody has a good ball. So what do you get except a good funeral? Listen, you say your wife doesn't know that you know anything about this guy, right? Yes. Doesn't even suspect? Nobody does? No. Then you wouldn't be suspected if something happened to the guy. Happened to him? What do you mean? You know what I mean. Are you suggesting I'm suggesting that... a funeral for him instead of you. Okay, so that doesn't make your wife love you again. Maybe, well, maybe it doesn't even keep her from leaving you. But if you can't have her, why should she get what she wants? No. Well, better than a river, honey. I'm not a murderer. I know you're not, honey. But I got a gentleman friend who is. What? If you've got a thousand dollars, my friend's got a gun. <laughs> Serious? Oh? You can't be. Oh, stop looking like you forgot to take your hat off in church. I make a federal case out of something so simple. Simple? Yeah, simple. It's his life of yours, ain't it? No. Well, then what were you doing out there on the bridge? Enjoying the view of Flatbush in the fog or just enjoying feeling sorry for yourself? Ah, guys like you make me sick. You've got as much backbone as Dutch's bar towel. Hey, Dutch, set me up one at the bar, will you? Wait. Well? Nothing. Look, Mr. Smith, I'm not trying to sell you anything. You got a problem. I told you how you could solve it. You don't like it my way? Okay, have it yours. No skin off my nose. But if you change your mind, you know where to find me. It's awfully nice of you to drive me home. Not at all, Ellen. I'm sorry Charlie couldn't make the party. Yes, it was too bad. By the way, I didn't know Charlie and you were acquainted with Mark Willard. Mark? Oh, yes. Yes, we met him last summer in Southampton. Ah, oh, Mark's a nice fellow. Yes. Yes, he is. Oh, here we are, Jerry. Right. Well, uh, thanks again for the lift. Okay, Ellen. We'll have to get together real soon, Ellen. Yes. Good night. Say hello to Charlie for us. <sighs> Ellen? Oh, Charles, you're home. I just got in a few minutes ago. Did you go to the Lindell's party? Yes, I, I'm sorry you couldn't make it. I called your office about nine, but there wasn't any answer. I felt like getting a little fresh air. I went for a walk. Is anything wrong, Charles? Wrong? Well, no, darling. Not with me. But you look terribly tired. I am. I think I'll go straight up to bed if you don't mind. Of course not. I'm going to read for a while. Good night, Ellen. Charles. Yes? Charles, I'd like to go away. Away? Where? Oh, I don't know. I haven't thought about that. I just want to get away. Alone? Yes. A little sudden, isn't it? Oh, yes, I suppose it is, but... Well, how long would you be gone? A week. All right, darling. We'll talk about it some more in the morning, and I'll have the office make the necessary arrangements. Thank you, Charles. You're awfully sweet to me. It's not hard, Ellen. Loving you as much as I do. Good night. Good night, Charles. Ellen? Yes? Was Mark Willard at the party? Why, yes, he was. Why do you ask? Just wondered. He's handling a little stock transaction for me. I thought he might have mentioned how he was making out on it. Well, no, he didn't say anything about it. Well, I'd better call him in the morning in case he's going out of town. Good night, Charles. Hello? Is this Duchess Tavern? Yeah? Is... Is Lucille there? You want to talk to her? No. No, just tell her Mr. Smith called. Ask her to wait for me there. I'll... I'll be in to see her within an hour. Give me a couple of nickels, Duchess. Here you are. Thanks. Has your friend showed yet? Hmm? No. 
Said he'd be here in an hour. He'll be here. I don't want him to see me. I know. So? Oh, so go sit in the last booth. I'll steer the guy into the next one. He won't see you, but you'll be able to hear us. Okay. Down, down, down. Hey, you're late. Sorry. What made you change your mind? Never mind. Let's get this over with. Sure. Let's uh, take this booth here. Huh? Here we are. You said your friend would work for a thousand dollars. That's right. There's a thousand in this envelope. Okay. Don't you want to count it? I trust you, honey. Well, what's the setup? The man who's been seeing my wife has made. Let's keep it sort of impersonal, huh? Just tell me where he'll be and when. Do you know Simmons Park? You mean the little park across from the cathedral up on Maynard Drive? Yes, there's a fountain in the center of the park. Right. He'll be there at 9 o'clock tomorrow evening. You're sure? He'll be there at 9 sharp. And you? Spending the evening with several friends miles from Simmons Park. Is there anything else you need to know? That's all. Good night, Mr. Smith. Not good night. Goodbye. Sure. It'd be nice knowing you. Did you hear? <laughs> A cinch. Jerry. Mm-hmm. The alarm clock. Turn it off. Hmm? No, Pam, it isn't the alarm clock. It's the doorbell. Oh. Must be someone at the door. Yeah. Oh, sounds logical. Put on your robe and slippers, dear. Mm. Yeah, yeah, coming. Yeah, now, what do you think? Ellen. Jerry, may I talk to you? Well, sure, sure, come on in. Thanks. Sam, it's Ellen Prescott. Ellen? Come into the living room, Ellen. I'm sorry to barge in at this hour of the morning, Jerry. It must be about five. Yeah, 5.30. Ellen, Ellen, darling, what is it? Is something the matter? I, I'm not sure. Well, what is it, Ellen? I've been up all night trying to find Charles. He was home when I came in last night. I went directly upstairs, and a few minutes later, I heard him leave the house. And you haven't seen him or heard from him since? No. Do you have any idea where he was going? None. He didn't say anything to me about going out. Something's happened to him. I know it has. Oh, take it easy, Ellen. If anything had happened to him, if he'd been in an accident or if he'd been taken to a hospital, you'd surely have been notified by this time. Oh, Pam, you don't understand. If something's happened, it wasn't an accident. Huh? What do you mean, Ellen? I... I don't know how to tell you. I've been such a fool. Oh, Ellen. Now, come on. Tell us about it, Ellen. I, I believe Charles knows I've been seeing another man. Oh, Ellen, no. I, I thought Charles knew nothing about Mark. Mark? Mark Willard? Yes. Oh, great. Mark wants me to divorce Charles. Marry him. But last night after the cocktail party, I... Well, I don't know what happened, but... I decided to tell Mark I still love Charles and... I'm not going to divorce him. Alan, what did you mean when you said that if something had happened to Charles, it wasn't an accident? I, I'm afraid he might... Kill himself? <laughs> Jerry. Sorry, but that's what she means. And this is no time to be delicate. Though, my guess is that Charles isn't stupid enough to do anything like that. Well, then where could he be? Pam, get Alan to bed. Make her get some sleep. I'm going out. Where? To find Charles. <laughs> Let's talk, deal. We were discussing a couple of weeks ago. I want to talk to you about it again. At nine o'clock in the middle of Simmons Park. There's someone I want you to meet, uh, Mark. A man I think you can uh, do some good with in a business way. He lives near the park, and I thought we could meet there and go on together. Well, all right, Charles. Simmons Park, nine o'clock. Sharp. Sharp. Charles. Jerry. Well, this is... The the, when the devil did you get home? Why? What's wrong? I've been looking all over town for you since 5.30 this morning. And before that, Ellen had spent half the night doing the same thing. Something the matter? Oh, no, no, not a thing, except that no one has heard from you for over 18 hours. And Ellen is at our apartment out of her mind worrying about you. I'm sorry. I should have told her I had to run down to Philadelphia this morning. Now, look, Charlie, let's stop kidding. Kidding? Oh, about what? Philadelphia. And whether Ellen would worry and... And about Mark Willard. Mark Willard? You know that Ellen's been seeing him, don't you? 
I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do. But something I know you don't know is that Ellen is still in love with you. In love with me? Yes. Jerry, if this is some sort of a joke... It's no joke. If you think it is, call Ellen at my place and let her tell you herself. But I... Jerry, look, I have to make a phone call. All right, I'll wait for no, you. No, no, please don't. Charlie, Listen, what is Jerry, it? go on home and tell Ellen you saw me and not to worry, and I'll be there shortly. But don't please. You... Okay. Thanks, thanks. See you in a little while, huh? Yes, yes. Willard and Company. Mr. Willard, please. I'm sorry, Mr. Willard isn't in. Not in? He left for the day. Well, why can I reach him? This is Charles Prescott. I'm sorry, sir, but Mr. Willard didn't say where he could be reached. But it's urgent. You must have some idea where I can get in touch with him. You must. I'm sorry, Mr. Prescott, but all Mr. Willard said when he left was that he was going out for cocktails and dinner before keeping a nine o'clock appointment. <laughs> Sure, I know Lucille. Say, hey, you're the guy that was in here with her last night, ain't you? Yes, can you tell me how I can get in touch with her? Well, she usually comes in here about nine, nine. I have to get in touch with her immediately. Do you know where she lives? No. Nope. You're lying. Now, just a minute, mister. No guy's going to call me a liar. Please, please. I'm sorry, I apologize, but I have to find Lucille. What you do, slip your mickey and take him for that roll you was flashing last night? No, no. Then what's your brief? I've Look who to... picks up who or what in here and what happens after they leave is none of my business. So? Listen to me, please, listen. It's worth $50 to me if you can give me any idea where I can find Lucille. Fifty. Here, here. Oh, that Lucille must have more on the ball than I figured. Okay, mister, I got a phone number. That's all, and that's on the level. Just a phone number. All right, give it to me. Yeah, let's see now. I have it written down right here. Yeah. Will you hurry up? I'm looking. Hold your... Ho- ah, here, here, yeah. A Pennsylvania 60599. Pennsylvania 60599. Lucille? That's right. Who's this, honey? Mr. Smith. Smith? The man you met in the bridge last night. Bridge? What bridge? What's the matter with you? This is the man with whom you made a certain arrangement. What is this, a gag? Listen to me. It's after eight. We haven't much time. Those arrangements must be canceled. You must get in touch with your friend and tell him not to keep the appointment in Simmons Park. Look, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't meet any man on the bridge, and I didn't make any arrangements. And I never knew anybody named Smith. Will you listen to... Hello? 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 Hello, darling. Jerry, darling, where have you been? No, ask me where I haven't been. It'd be easier to answer. What do you mean? Well, I saw Charles at his house, but he practically showed me the door. What? Let me finish. After I left, I waited in the car. In a few minutes, he came out and took a taxi to a dive called Duchess on the Lower East Side. Then he left there, went to Mark Willard's apartment, and after that, he, he went to practically every restaurant and cocktail lounge in town. Well, where is he now? I don't know. I lost him. And I gather you or Ellen haven't heard from him. No, but Mark Willard called Ellen here and said he had an appointment with Charles at 9 in Simmons Park. Simmons Park? Well, why the devil are they meeting there? I don't know. Neither does Mark Willard. All he said was that Charles insisted on it. What time is it now? It's about 8.35. Look. You and Ellen take a taxi and meet me at the Maynard Drive entrance to the park. If the three of us hurry, we can just about make it by nine. In the name of heaven, driver, can't you go any faster? I'm doing the best I can, Mac. But it's only a couple of minutes to nine. And I... Relax, Mac. It's a couple of minutes to nine twice a day. But you don't understand. This is a matter of life or death. Yeah, sure, Mac. It always is. It is if I'm not at Simmons Park by nine. But you're there, Mac. Right now. There we are. Hey, listen. Nine on the nose. Hey, Mac. Hey, what about my fare? Mark! Mark! The goat! Oh! Come on. Have you seen Charles? Yeah, he just jumped out of a cab and ran into the park. Jerry! Oh, those were gunshots. Oh! Come on! What in the world is happening? I don't know, but hold it. What? 
Look over there. That man running out of the park. Well, he must have been over by the fountain, too. Yeah. Pam, you and Ellen go on to Charles and Mark. I'm going to grab the car and try to follow that man. Gary! Darling, be careful. Come on, Pam. Charles! 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 Ellen, Pam, what are you doing here? Well, never mind that now. Go call an ambulance. No, no, don't. Don't bother. Go on, Marty. Yes. Charles. Charles, it was it. What happened? That is meant for Mark. For Mark? Ellen, Jerry told me you weren't going to leave me. Never, never doubt me. I'll never leave you, darling. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you. Charles! Charles! Alan, he's... he's dead. And then just as I drew a bead in that guy standing by the fountain, some joker runs into the park yelling, Mark, Mark, look out. Go on. Well, the guy at the fountain moved just as I let a blast, and the jerk that yelled at him ran to a free slug. Was the guy you shot the guy was in here talking to me last I night? I tell you, I don't know who he was. It was dark. Didn't even see him till after I started blasting. What? Must have been. Why, the stupid jerk. What was he doing there? I don't know, and I didn't wait around to ask. Well, you sure messed this up. I messed it up? Yeah. You're the one who made the deal. You're the one who said it was solid. All right, all right. Besides, what difference does it make? In fact, it works out better this way. We get the dough, and the only guy could hook us up with the paper I'm going to be talking. Yeah, that's right. I hadn't thought of that. So cheer up. Let me say we blow this joint, huh? Where you want to go? Where you think. Come on. Night, Dutch. Yeah. Think of night. Me, I like the fog. Oh, you would. Um, my place? Your place. Sorry, but it's going to be my place. That's the man, officer. Well, well, my old friend Spade Loomis. This will be a pleasure. Spade's worn these cuffs off, and I'm thinking of having a monogram with these initials. Come along, Spade. We'll take Dirty it out. Cup of Look out, Murdoch! Are you okay, Murdoch? Fit as a fiddle, Mr. North. Spade! Oh, Spade! I'm afraid he can't hear you. Like you said yourself, lady, it's a stinking night. Well, it certainly didn't take that Lucille woman long to break down once they got her down to headquarters, did it? Nope. Tired? At four o'clock in the morning, what do you think? We'll be home soon. Yeah. Oh, here we are, driver. Pull up in front of that tavern. Here you are. Keep the change. Oh, I wish the police would have let me drive our car instead of riding in the squad car. We'd have been home by this time. Stop grumbling, sleepyhead. I'm telling you, if I'm not home and in bed within 15 minutes, I'm dead. Well, you will be. And instead of grousing so much, you should be thankful that nothing happened to you in that gunfight mm. between Officer Murdoch and that Loomis man. Here's the car. Come on up. Oh, no. What? Look at that tire. Flat. What did you say about nothing happening to me in that gunfight? Well, what has the gunfight to do with it? Well, look at the way the tires rip. One of the bullets hit it. sure to have more exciting adventures next week. Listen in, won't you? There's always mystery well sprinkled with humor on Mr. and Mrs. North. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.